This video is a very short presentation of the paper published during the ICRA conference. The presented work deals with the localization problem of a robot in an environment made of indistinguishable landmarks. We propose an original localization method based on constraint propagation, and we will evaluate its performance on an underwater experiment. The following video has been made by the French Navy during the experiments with the autonomous underwater vehicle named DORAD. This AUV comes from a collaboration between the French DGA and the Naval Hydrographic and Oceanographic Service. The robot is fully equipped for being able to explore a wide environment during several hours. Its payload counts a range of acoustic sensors including a side scan sonar for seabed imaging. One can see its two black antennas on each side of the hull. We will use information from this sonar to improve the localization of the robot. Underwater images are not always easy to process, especially when they come from acoustic sensors. The sonar image presented on this slide has been acquired by the robot during the mission. At least two rocks can be observed. Several algorithms exist in the literature for detecting automatically objects in such image, but these methods are not able to distinguish one rock from another, since they all look alike. Nevertheless, the perception of one anonymous rock can still be used to reduce the navigation drift, if we assume that the prior map of the rock is at end. So we will consider the following assumptions. First, the map does not evolve with time and is made of points such as rocks. Then, we assume that all the landmarks of the environment look alike. Third, the map of the environment is known with bounded uncertainties, which means that the position of each landmark is available in a box. And finally, because of the position of the robot uh, may be lost during the diving phase, we consider that its initial position is unknown, which means that our localization algorithm will have to behave without initial conditions. The main purpose of the presented work is to perform localization together with the identification of the detected landmarks. Now, if we formalize the problem, we obtain three main equations. The first one is related to the known map of the landmarks detected by the set M. The 2D vector MI is, for instance, the landmark observed at a time Ti, and it is known to belong to the map M, depicted by the blue boxes of the figure. Then we have the classical state equations, namely the evolution function f and the observation equation with the function g that can be nonlinear. We will not detail these functions that are classical in mobile robotics. What must be underlined, however, is that a given observation y at time i, made for instance of a range and bearing vector, corresponds to a given landmark denoted by the vector mi. While the yi vector is given by the sonar image, the exact mi vector associated with this observation is unknown. So the data association step consists in finding the right vector mi corresponding to the observation that has been made. And this will be achieved by merging all data together, including inertial measurements. And we obtain a kind of chicken and egg problem like we usually encounter in simultaneous localization and mapping situations. We propose in this work to solve it by using a constraint propagation approach. And to understand how constraints can solve this problem, let us consider this simple 1D example. So let's start with a given map M made of six landmarks. We will perform a state estimation over three steps and try to compute the feasible values for the state. The three yellow robots are the actual positions that we are looking for. And as one can see, the three robots are perceiving a landmark. This means that for the three steps, we can consider the following constraints. We know that these states belong to the map. And of course, the robot moves. So we add the following evolution constraints to link the states among each other. And now the constraint propagation can start. The yellow dots depict the possible values for the initial position. First, the constraint related to the perception allows to remove a set of infeasible positions. The first constraint for x1 is then considered and provides a first estimation from the previous state. And in the same way, remove infeasible solutions thanks to the map constraint. 
The three feasible states are then propagated to the last step. And as one can see, it appears that only one value is consistent with the constraints defined so far. So we have find the exact value for x2. This can be propagated to the previous states by using the evolution constraints, but this time backward in time. So, of course, this example does not reflect the reality of actual data with uncertainties and continuous sets of values, but it helps to understand the approach. We can now use a set membership method to solve the same problem. Now, the feasible sets of values will be intervals detected by brackets, and also the constraints will be dealt with by using contractors that are mathematical operators used to reduce intervals. The initial set sets for the states are defined as the envelopes of all the feasible states. OK, so now we launch the, construct the contractions step by step. And as one can see, the algorithm converges after more steps than the previous example. This is due to the fact that we only work on the bounds of the sets, which allows to avoid some combinatorial explosion during the computations. And this is an important point for our localization approach. It means that we will be able to deal with a large number of landmarks and long-term missions made of numerous states. OK, so this example was only 1D, linear, and discrete in time. But we can easily extend it to the more general case by using appropriate sets of values and contractors. For the map constraint, we will extend the previous contractor to the two-dimensional case. This means that we are now contracting 2D boxes as presented in this figure. The vectors mi are depicted in white, and the feasible values for identifying the rocks are drawn with colored boxes that are contracted thanks to the information provided by the map. Other contractors exist in the literature to handle the state equations. It is easy to combine them in order to reach the complexity of the problem we are dealing with. For differential constraints, for instance, as the one encountered for the evolution function, we can apply contractors on sets of trajectories. In this illustration, we provide a tube X together with its feasible derivatives V presented on the right hand side. Using a dedicated contractor, we are able to contract the tube X so that we only keep the envelope of trajectories that are crossing the I interval at time 7. So, to sum up, a solver can be achieved by combining contractors related to our equations. As for the previous illustration, we will need an iterator resolution method in order to contract the intervals and tubes as much as possible. And this process will stop after reaching a fixed point when nothing more can be contracted. The results obtained on the Dorado experiment demonstrate that the method can be used online for localization. In the following video that has been made from actual data, one can see the blue part representing the tube of feasible positions of the robot. And because we do not know the initial position, everything is blue at first. The method provides some accurate estimation of the positions right after the beginning of the mission. And this is because the constellation of detected works is unique in the map. And in fact, the solver has been able to eliminate infeasible solutions in a short amount of time. So to understand this video, I must add that the sonar images are pictured under the tube of positions. And also the small robots illustrate the times of perceptions when the robot has detected a rock in the sonar images. And also the uncertainty related to the range and bearing observation is drawn with white sets. Note that the landmarks that have been identified without ambiguity are displayed in a range. Well, these results show that the localization drift is maintained over time. In comparison, other existing methods often run into difficulties when both the initial position and the data associations are unknown. We will conclude by underlying that the computations are also reliable, which means that we ensure to never lose any feasible solution. As one can see, the actual trajectory, depicted in white, is always enclosed in the blue tube. And this is particularly important in order to provide reliability for autonomous systems. So thank you for watching. Please note that this video was the first overview of the full paper proposed for the conference. We propose in addition a dedicated tutorial for learning how to use constraint programming for mobile robotics. And among other things, the tutorial explains step by step how to solve this localization problem.